Mr. War, if our planet breaks up into many fatso asteroids hurling themselves blindly through space, there will be no one to blame but you, Mr. War. There will be no average citizens. There will be no tiny army of the super rich. There will be no innocent infants. And should you, in your fool-headedness, think there'll be an escape route no one has thought of yet, well, as they say, think again. As they say, good luck with that. Instead, anticipate a world that has ceased to be a world. There will be no melancholy poems. There will be no voices crying or chanting. There will be no wilderness, but the wilderness of outer space, vast, uninviting, unknowable. Yeah. Bookstore clerk. A ship in the night, he, through a pile of books, plows, his face a tsunami of concentration, his hands stacking volumes deftly with speed. His upper back curves over, feels pinched or burdened, as if carrying 10 spruce trees up 30 stairs. He moves down one aisle, up another, a wind he is, a churning gust to clear away leaves. He seeps all over the place without let up, minus hesitations. <laughs> he is here like the walls, like the ceiling, permanent, intent, needed. at a poetry reading. Sprinkle the air with disinfectant as the dirty poet reads his smutty poems. <laughs> then sit still, exceedingly still, so dreadfully still your limbs become numb as your mind has become, listening to his trashiness. <laughs> Don't shout, I can't move my legs, my feet thus projecting your paralysis onto others. Don't say you wish the filthy-mouthed poet hadn't mustered the energy to locate pen and paper or hadn't rallied the locomotion to reach this poetry venue. Instead, imitate the poplars, their branches perpendicular, soaring loftily, sublimely, eagling into the sky, elevated above the puke and muck that mocks the delicate splendor of life.